Hi, everyone. This is Mike Fink. I am your child's English teacher for this year. Thank you so much for viewing this presentation, uh, this back to school night presentation. Even though I can't be there in person, I hope that this information uh, is informative. And if you do have any questions, please let me know. Uh, I have some information on the final slide um, about contact information. So uh, first, a little bit about me and then a little bit more about the class. All right, so a little bit about me. Uh, this is my 15th year here at Council Rock North. It's really the only real job I've ever had ever since I graduated college. This is the uh, full-time career that I've ever had, and I don't think I'll be anywhere else. Uh, as well as teaching English 10, I also teach English 9. Um, I'm also in charge of the Student Executive Board at Council Rock North, which is SEB. So we're in charge of bigger events like Blue and White Night and the Talent Show and Mr. Sierra. Uh, went to Villanova for my undergrad and my master's at St. Joe's University. And a little bit about myself personally, I have two boys. Uh, one's name is Liam, the other is EJ. Liam is 10 and EJ is eight. And there they are right there. First day of school yesterday. Okay, so these are some expectations that I have of all my students. Um, I just wanna go over these kind of quickly. Um, so I have students should, I wrote, be present. Now, I don't mean obviously being present in class. I mean being like uh, mentally with us, uh, keeping up with work, uh, keeping up with discussion, volunteering, um, being able to take a risk um, in English class. And sometimes you have success and sometimes you don't have success. But just being there and not, uh, you know, quote unquote, phoning it in for, for English. I know that English is probably not your son or daughter's favorite subject. It may even be their least favorite subject. Um, and that's okay, but they, I want them to, to grow as learners. I want them to grow as, as, as individuals and as readers in our class. Um, and the way that they do that is being present, being physically present in class, but also like being with us. Uh, number two up there says being flexible and I try to be very flexible with the kids, uh, you know, if they reach out in terms of needing an extension for something, um, I, I'm, I'm usually pretty good uh, at getting back to them and, and giving them that. Uh, I ask them to be flexible with me. Uh, I've taught English 10, uh, I think, pretty sure every year that I've been at Council Rock North. And if 10th grade English was taught the same way, time after time after time after time, I would get bored. So I try to do different things. Uh, and sometimes those, those things work out and sometimes they don't work out. Um, so I just ask the students to be flexible with me. Being prepared uh, in the English classroom, we are almost entirely digital. Um, Canvas is uh, used daily. Chromebooks are used extensively in class. So really the only way that, that they need to be prepared is having a charged Chromebook every day, having their, work, their homework done, and having a good attitude. Really, that's what, what it takes to be prepared in, in our class, be ready to learn. Uh, being organized uh, as a 21st century student, really their only organization is time management and can they organize their digital life. So for time management, you know, they need to, they're, they're in 10th grade now, they need to step up and realize that due dates are important and that some due dates are closer than others and they need to prioritize some things and, 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 and not procrastinate. Uh, the other way they can be organized is if they organize sort of their digital life. And what I mean by that is, uh, you know, they have Google Drives and most kids' Google Drives are just all over the place. And yeah, I know they have find functions and search functions, but uh, it's much easier if things are a little bit more organized. So I try to preach that a little bit as well. Uh, next one says, try your best. Uh, like I said a few minutes back, English is probably not their favorite subject. Uh, it probably doesn't come easy to them but that doesn't mean they can't meet me halfway and try their best. Uh, I'm gonna give them my effort. I want that effort right back from them. And it is gonna be a struggle at times, but that struggle is gonna ultimately lead to success in the classroom. And finally, the last bullet point there says to communicate and to advocate for themselves. They're growing up. Uh, I really try to push this with freshmen. So um, you know, your, your sons and daughters have had another year of this. And that is if they're gonna be absent, or if they're struggling in class, I encourage them to reach out to me. I do wanna hear from you, but I'd rather hear from them first because they need to have a little ownership of their grade and they need to have, um, you know, uh, they, they need to be invested. 
So yes, if things get out of hand and I need to bring you in the loop, absolutely feel free always to email me and I'll be happy to, to keep that communication open. But I do want to hear from your sons and daughters and let them sort of advocate for themselves. All right, let's talk about literature. So you'll see there's a little icon in the top right hand corner called actively learn. English teachers are really, really excited that uh, the district bought this program. Uh, what it does is it has all of our readings this year, besides the catcher in the rye, on this program. And it, what it does is it, it embeds questions, it embeds videos, it embeds discussion points, um, little side notes um, to help enhance the reading um, on any given page that they're on. And for the quizzes, the quiz questions, they actually cannot move on in the text unless they've answered the quiz question. So that's really, really helpful with reading comprehension. And we're really, really excited that this program is now uh, fully bought in by the district. So um, we're very excited about that. Uh, as for vocabulary, your students will be aware of this program that we started last year called Membean. Uh, there are tests given throughout the program, about every two weeks or so, they'll have a vocab test. Um, they do training, as they call it, three times a week um, so that uh, they, they grow in that vocabulary. And I, I'm, I know that we were very, very happy with this new program that went in last year as well. On to writing. Uh, your sons and daughters should be uh, familiar with the way writing works in Reading Writing Workshop. So writing is done in the writing lab with Mr. Mojkovic. That is a completely separate grade on Canvas for their English grade. And what it comes down to when you average it all out is five to seven intensive writing sessions per month, which evens out to probably somewhere between 13 and 16 full class periods that they will have intensely writing per marking period, which is huge. That's so about a third of the marking period they'll be with Mr. Mojkovic. Um, he will also be helping with their research-based essay, which is uh, called the iSearch research paper. With me, I'll be covering some grammar. We will be doing some writing, some shorter pieces with, with me, um, short responses. But we're also going to be using another program called Quill with, with regards to grammar. Again, another program I've heard a lot about. Uh, I myself have not used it yet, so it'll be a little bit uh, of an adventure for me. But uh, I'm excited to, to incorporate this new uh, program into our uh, curriculum. All right, let's talk about grades. So grades... Um, for the first, second, and third marking periods are exactly calculated the same. The writing lab grade, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, is 30% of the grade, while everything else, tests, quizzes, projects, written assignments, classwork, homework, participation, all of that together is the other 70%. We get to the fourth marking period, slightly different. Writing lab is still 30. The other category drops down to 45%, and then the remaining 25% is the final exam. So every student has to take a final exam in every subject, and this is where that's calculated into the Some other sort of random things uh, I put here on the end of the slide, this last slide of this presentation. Um, Canvas, uh, like I mentioned with the Chromebooks, that they are almost exclusively what we're using every single day in class. Canvas is a, is a huge, huge tool for us every single day in the classroom. That's a really good way to get a snapshot of your child's success in English class. Second bullet point talks about absences. I give the students a week to make up any missed assessments, meaning tests. Um, after that, then I'm holding back other students from getting back their assessments. Places you, that um, you or your child can check if they've missed something. They can check the Canvas calendar. The students would know where that was on Canvas. The Canvas to-do list that appears on the right-hand side of their uh, dashboard, as it's called, and finally the weekly agenda that I'll put on uh, to Canvas as well. Third bullet point talks about HAC, H-A-C, and assessment return. So HAC is Home Access Center. Um, the only thing I'm really using Home Access Center for now these days is to input interim grades at the midway point and final grades for the marking period. So I'm only really using that eight times per year. If you really want the most up-to-date grade for your son or daughter, Canvas is the place to go. Assessment return. As soon as I grade something on Canvas, it'll push out that grade to your son or daughter and most likely you as well. Um, sometimes I have to hold grades back because students haven't made them up 
uh, as I spoke to about absences before. So I try to get those absences taken care of quickly so that we can move on. Uh, finally, the last two are just dates that I think are important. So we have the first interim reports. That's that midway point of the marking period, October 3rd. So we're already less than a month away from that. And at the end of the first marking period, those grades are due on November the 8th. That marking period closes on that day. And um, if there was to be an issue with a grade, if a, if a student was performing poorly, I would be in contact with you way before November 8th. Uh, I don't like surprises. I'm sure you don't either. Um, hopefully, we all have success and your students all have success. But if there is something I do need to contact you about a grade, it'll be well in advance of the end of the marking period. Um, I know it's, um, you know, this is a weird way of communicating communicating information from back to school night, but I am I'm really happy that you stuck with me till the end of this video. Uh, I appreciate you, you watching. Um, sorry I couldn't meet you in person. I'm happy to answer any questions or, or, or concerns via email. I'm always here to help your kids, whether that be before or after school. Um, I'm happy to do it. I'm usually around at least 45 minutes after school every day. And a lot of times those conversations that, that I need to have with your kids are, are probably only about 10 minutes or 15 minutes. So if you can provide uh, a way for them to get home, I'm happy to meet with them and, and work with them on anything that they may need. Last but not least, I mentioned this at the beginning, this is just my email address. Uh, and if you do have any private comments or concerns, the email's there. Uh, Canvas is also has a message function that you can message me that way. Um, either one of those will, will get to me pretty quickly. Uh, I'm sorry I couldn't be there tonight, but I do hope um, that we get to talk. And hopefully it's only for good reasons, but I really am looking forward to uh, this school year with your son or daughter. Thank you so much for spending your time with me.